Hey, this is Mark Henry, author of Dancing with Energy, Healing Magic and Mysticism. Well, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about the question, why honor our ancestors, otherwise known as ancestor veneration? Well, first I want to make mention that ancestor veneration is a part of many cultures. In fact, most cultures adhere to some sort of um, honoring of one's ancestors. So you'll find it in Japanese, Mexican, African cultures, you'll find it on some of the belief systems in Cuba and the Caribbean. It, and that's not even the, an exhaustive list. So when we're talking about uh, ancestor veneration, uh, it's also a supported by spiritualism, which I've talked about in other videos, and its various expressions, including uh, spiritism, spiritismo, and all of those spiritual church movement, all of those different types of spiritualism. Now, I guess the, the, the main question is why ancestor veneration? Well, we are connected inexorably to our ancestors from the past. We have a, a bloodline. Um, some occultists speculate that you know, the body, the mind, and spirit are one, and that through the bloodline that we are not only connected in that way through our genetics to our past and past relatives, but also spiritually. So um, distant, distant relatives who have transitioned into the spirit world um, are connected to us, have a stronger bond to us through that bloodline than, let's say, you know, somebody who's even been your, your friend for a while who, who died. Um, so that's kind of the, I would say maybe the importance of, or why it's significant, why we're talking about ancestor veneration. So we are connected. Um, so what is the, what is the benefit um, of going about doing that? Well, the benefit for the relative from the past who we may not even have met, you know, they may be, a lot of times, if these spirits from our past, from our, our ancestors, all are, are in or close to the earth plane, they're hanging around, they're watching. They are maybe even trying to contact us, trying to communicate with us. And it would it would be wise to be able to open up and try to communicate with them back there might be something that we can do for them or uh, they may be able to help us in some way so we we can help them by sending you know positive thoughts prayers healing light um, all those different types of things good intentions all of that spiritually nourish them it spiritually elevates them um, there is even in uh, Catholicism, um, you know, the practice of, um, I'm, I'm, I want to say maybe a feast day, I'm not entirely sure, um, but a, a, a holiday where uh, Catholics pray, to, pray for the uh, past relatives that may be in purgatory. And by doing that, I believe it shortens the length, but it has some type of spiritual effect. And not to get into a discussion about that, but to just to say that our positive intentions, our prayers, our sending light and love and goodwill towards them spiritually elevates them. That there is a communication, a transfer of energy from us to them and them to us. So that's what we do on their end. Not to mention that if the people that you are communicating with, maybe it's somebody you did know in your life, maybe it's your parents, uh, maybe it's your brother and sister, if they're still around and able to communicate, that you might want to further that relationship with them. So that is, um, you know, that's, that's what I have to say about that. Um, so what can they possibly do for us? And, and I'm not saying that that is the reason why you do it, but in the continuing of the relationship, as a side 
uh, maybe consequence is that they can also positively influence your life. Uh, there are plenty of instances where people who practice ancestor veneration on a regular basis, they do find that over time their life tends to go smoother. They tend to challenges that were once very overwhelming seem to they seem to transition through almost like that by continuing the relation continuing the relationship and having that back and forth type of positivity that your life tends to get smoother spiritually maybe almost as like if you had friends and they would help you out and you would help them out on the physical plane that there is something about um, our extending our spiritual energy to them and they can do the same to us. A couple of caveats to that, of course, is that it would have to be these relatives that you're communicating with would have to be open to that and like you and love you enough to do that. Uh, but that gets into a whole other discussion. I don't believe in if you have had people in the past who have seriously harmed you, hurt you, all that type of stuff, you know, it's of course your free choice of whether to acknowledge it and work with that. Um, there are benefits and drawbacks to that. You might want to heal that relationship if that's possible. Um, but that is not something that is, uh, I'm suggesting to do if you feel uncomfortable with. But just to know that when you can find and work with the ancestors that do care about you, that do uh, are fond of you, that it can benefit your life in a great degree. It's just a continuation of uh, you know the the wonderful things that you can do for each other. Another. Uh, I guess positive benefit is that if you like this, if you like ancestor veneration, if you like talking with your departed loved ones, is that it can also attract spirits that you might want to work with. Of course, I suggest to develop some skills and spiritual discernment so you can kind of tell if that happens, if you attract the attention of spirits, which ones are there to for your welfare and that you can help and which ones are there to mess with you to um, just entertain themselves in which case you don't need to mess with them in my opinion um, they're just going to be a distraction um, however um, I'm, I'm mentioning ancestors ancestor veneration and that it could be a doorway for you to learn advanced skills of spiritual communication and to uh, work with different um, types of spirits if you're into that. So next question is how do you honor your ancestors? You could be as simple as in meditation, you know, calling forth your ancestors. If you know their names, great. Um, if not, you know, you can kind of make it kind of a, a more vague request about your uh, past ancestors want to contact one of them or you can do an ancestor altar and that is pretty common in some of the traditions that I mentioned um, I have one I have a white cloth I usually put a, a white candle a picture of the person that I'm wanting to work with um, a glass of water which is customary um, it's supposed to attract um, positive spirits and be a symbol of purification also, um, they seem to be able to use the water in some way to extract its uh, essence. Um, some people burn incense, but you know that would be that would be extra. Some people put flowers, and um, light the candle, and that can be your altar can be your focal point for calling in your ancestors. Um, I would make a couple suggestions. The most important one would be to try to do this on a regular basis, meaning uh, try to devote at least once or twice a week for a period, for you know, every period of time to do this. Over time, you will get better results because it will be like a date, it'll be like a meeting. 
Okay, so I'm devoting 7 o'clock Thursday evening to do this. So over time, you'll find that you get much better communication because there is a regular pattern to it. There is a routine. Um, just random times, you may have, it might be hit or miss. Um, but it's also showing a commitment to adhere to a particular practice, a little bit of discipline. And that goes a long way. Not to mention that you will make yourself, uh, again, going back to other spirits that might be kind of, you know, oh, check this person out. He's He actually acknowledges that there's a spirit world. He, he is treating his ancestors well. So, you know, maybe I'd like to talk with him. You know, you, again, you could use this as an opportunity to uh, speak with other spirits. And that is basically it. That is a quick rundown of ancestor veneration. Um, it doesn't have to be too complicated. Uh, there are people who um, even offer even food and other types of offerings to their family. Um, of course, that's, that's optional, and you just have to learn the the protocol. So this is Mark Henry. Please like and subscribe and I will talk to you at a different time next week probably. See you later. Bye-bye.